So I wanted to put together a quick video uh, explaining some steps that you can take to become a better photographer, to ultimately become the best photographer that you can be. Now these steps are gathered from my own experience of the past three years of falling in love with photography and then pursuing it, learning all that I could to become the best photographer that I could. And I'm going to be on that journey for a long time. But I thought it would be helpful to actually have some concrete steps that you can follow and in your own journey in becoming a photographer. So I boiled it down to 10 steps. I'm going to start right now with step number one, which is to admit that you love photography. I mean, come on, admit it. If you don't love photography, then why are you watching this video? So admit that you love photography. Photography is something that once it grabs hold of you, it really never lets go. And it is a labor of love for those of us that do it. And if we get paid to do it, we probably can't believe sometimes that we're getting paid to do something we love to do so much. So admit that you love photography is step number one. Step number two is to learn all that you can about your camera and your lens or lenses. Whether you have a digital point and shoot camera, a really expensive DSLR camera, you have one lens, five lenses, 10 lenses, it's important that you know your equipment inside and out. You know what it can do and what its limitations are. You need to know your lenses. Are they fast lenses or are they not so fast lenses? Are they wide angle, mid range, telephoto lens? And what do those mean and what kind of application? When, when do you use those different types of lenses? So know your equipment so that you don't have to be worrying about it when you actually go out to take your photos. Now number three is to understand completely the three components of exposure. Those components are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I did another video where I went much more into depth on those things and I would recommend that you look at that if you aren't fully comfortable with the um, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO and how those three aspects interrelate. Um, but you want to learn those and then learn to shoot in manual mode. Once you understand those, you can actually dictate to your camera what shutter speed, what aperture, what ISO to use and take control of your shoot rather than letting your camera make all the decisions for you. It's going to result in more control of your photography and better uh, images for you in the end. So learn those three variables and learn to shoot in manual mode is number three. Number four is to study and know your subject. Now I got a great piece of advice several years ago when I first got into photography. I was very excited and I was taking pictures of everything I could see and I was shooting pictures of cars and people and cats and buildings and everything. But this person told me that um, to really find out what you love to photograph, what you're naturally good at, what you have an eye for, and then to really photo, um, focus on those things, that one or two things, and to really narrow down your focus and then learn all you can about that subject. If you know you're going to love to do wedding photography, then learn what a bride and groom are going to expect from a wedding photographer. Learn maybe some poses to tell a bride and groom, um, how to pose a wedding party, how to interact with people, what to expect at different times of the day in terms of lighting. Maybe you love football or soccer. Learn about that sport. Learn where the action is going to be. Learn where the light is going to be at different times of the day so that you can position yourself in the right place. But really understand and know your subject inside and out so that you can anticipate and be prepared for when you go out to do that type of photography and to focus it onto one or two areas. So that's number four. Number five is to invest in a DSLR camera, which is a camera that has interchangeable lenses and the best lens or lenses that you can afford. Now I don't want you to go into debt. I just w want you to whatever you can afford, get the best camera and lenses that you can because this will pay off. Higher quality lenses, higher quality cameras really do make a difference in the long run when you get into the higher end of photography. Uh, this is something that I learned um, by thinking I could chimp my way um, or cheat my way out of it and then I saw the results from a cheaper lens versus a higher end lens and I was sold. I, I basically saved my money in, until I could get the lens that I wanted to. So really get the best equipment that you can afford but do not go into debt as you maybe save or make more money then you can trade up and get some more expensive equipment. Number six is to find and study other photographers whose work you enjoy and or admire. So find photographers who are in the same area that, that you like to shoot. Maybe you are into wedding photography. Find some wedding photographers that take pictures that just blow your mind and find out about that photographer. Find out maybe what equipment they use. Find out their learning process. Anything you can read about them. Maybe they have tutorial videos. Learn about their process of photography and then try to emulate it or at least learn from it. And, and don't just stop at one, get several. I mean the more input that you can get is really the better 
that you're going to be ultimately. It's just kind of gaining knowledge and understanding as you go through the process. So that's number six. Number seven is to become a student of light. Um, photography actually is the study of light, or I guess it's painting with light, um, is the real term or the definition of it. So you need to understand and become a student of light. You need to understand the color of light. There are different colors of light. If you're out in the sun, it's a different color of light than if you're indoors under, say, fluorescent light or tungsten lighting. You need to understand how that's going to affect your subject and the color of around you. You need to understand the quality of light. Is it a hard light? Is it a soft light? And what does that mean? And then to understand directionality of light and how that may affect your photos. If the sun is directly overhead, that's going to make a different result than if the sun is directly behind the subject or behind you, the photographer. So you need to become a student of light. Uh, I find myself driving down the road or in different um, situations and I'm basically asking myself, okay, if I were to take a picture now, where's the best light? What time of the day is the best um, time of day for the kind of photo I want to take? So really become a student of light. Um, number eight is to shoot in raw mode. Uh, most point-and-shoot cameras may not offer this, but most DSLRs will offer you uh, the ability to shoot in raw mode and then to get a decent uh, post-production software, something like Adobe Photoshop Elements or Lightroom, or on the less expensive side, Corel Paint Shop Pro is a good program. On the higher end, of course, there's Photoshop. But you need to be able to learn to shoot in raw mode get some decent software, and learn to make the very basic uh, adjustments to your photos after you take the photos, import them into your computer. You need to learn how to adjust white balance, exposure, and contrast. Those would be the three most basic things you need to learn how to do. And then, of course, there's an umpillion number of things you can learn how to do. I'm still learning, and I will be learning for probably decades to come on how to use some of the more advanced features in Photoshop and some of the more advanced software. So, number nine, only two more to go. Number nine is to never stop learning. Never stop learning. You never know enough. There's never enough information that you can gather. I mean, obviously, don't let it stop you from pursuing photography, but there's always more information coming out, and there's a ton of different ways, especially today on the Internet and within the digital age. There's ways to to get DVDs, to go online and YouTube, search, um, you may have found this video on YouTube, which means you're on the right track, but search for subjects, search for uh, photographers, aspects of photography, there's tutorial videos that just take a few minutes to watch and all that knowledge will just really help you expand your knowledge and your understanding of photography. So never stop learning. And you could take seminars, I've been to a couple seminars, I'd actually love to go to more. Um, but like I mentioned, DVDs, tutorial videos, those, those can all be valuable sources of information. Now number 10 is the most important one of all, and that is practice. Practice your craft. Practice shooting. Trial and error is probably the best teacher that you could ever have in photography. And learn from your mistakes. If a photo looks bad, um, just find out why it looks bad, what you could have done to correct that. If a photo looks great, was it a happy accident? Or did you actually, you know, create this great photograph because you understood how and, and why? Now, a lot of times, especially in the beginning, there will be some happy accidents and there will be some not so happy accidents. But find out why the photos you took that you love turned out so well so that you can recreate that the next time you are presented with a similar situation. And on the other side, if it's a not so happy accident, find out what was done wrong. Maybe. You didn't understand where the light was coming from or you didn't um, have your cam camera in manual mode and you weren't controlling the exposure. There's all kinds of different things to learn from just doing it yourself in practice and there's never really an end to practicing. Just like anybody that wants to become a master at their craft in any craft is going to put in the hours, put in the days, the weeks, the months of practice. So it really will pay off. So those are the 10 steps. I hope that they've been helpful to you. I'm constantly um, pursuing pretty much most of those steps, and I hope that you will too. And thank you for watching, and uh, get excited about it, because this is a fun journey.